and I'll never back down In the middle of the ring is where I lay the smack down Against all odds I will always prevail The way you step to me is like hell in the cell Greetings and salutations, this is Christopher Daniels. I'm talking to my main man Delzinski right now. Any video game show, any video game channel, any YouTube channel called Vintage Shizzle is indeed hashtag Daniels approved. Yo, all right guys, Delzinski here. Welcome to another We Talk. This time we're on Sunday, but we'll be back next week in our regular time slot of Saturdays at 2 p.m. UK time. And I'm joined once again by Weeds, fresh out the frying pan, into the fire. What a busy weekend we have had. How you doing, mate? I'm really well. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm still kind of uh, recovering, which about something that I assume we are going to talk about in great length today. That is the uh, brilliant Royal Rumble that we watched. Yeah. I'm using uh, kind of a uh, quotation speech marks around the brilliant side of the Royal Rumble. Um, but yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Uh, last night, obviously, we went to a TNA Impact Wrestling at Wembley Arena. And uh, for all those TNA haters out there, this was an awesome show. We'll talk about that later on in uh, in today's uh, We Talk. But uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Weed, you got anything to say on that? No, it was um, probably, I think I uh, tweeted something um similar last night probably the best event i've actually been to whether it's wwe wcw um wwf going back quite a while that was probably the best event i've been to and it was um a variety of wrestling shall we say but yeah more to cover on that later yeah absolutely wicked show that we went to last night and obviously the main talking point uh last week we covered it on we talk with a preview of the royal rumble um yeah they went with our uh, final suggestion, which was don't change anything and keep it as. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about the Royal Rumble uh, in in depth today because uh, all the controversy is kind of bubbled down a little bit. But I mean, let's let's face facts. It, it wasn't exactly um, a very enjoyable Royal Rumble. My view on the whole event as a whole was it was doing very well. Um, up to the point of the last 20 minutes of the Royal Rumble where it just kind of uh, fell to pieces with the elimination of Daniel Bryan. So very frustrating. Weeds, what did you think of the Royal Rumble uh, as a whole? Well, I I liked it up and up until about the same point you did. I think the expectation a lot with WWE events now, uh, particularly the pay-per-views, is that you're really only going into it looking at, what, one or two matches that you, you're really looking forward to, and the rest is kind of filler, which is not great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, up until I think it, it was weird, and I suppose that's the best thing to say, that it was that it was weird with how they dealt with Daniel Bryan, whether it is an a literal, you know, F you to the fans or we're back where we were last year. But that's what it felt like. It was like, what have WWE learned in the space of 12 months? Because based on what we saw, um, not a lot. <laughs> um, and increasingly it's becoming, it's kind of reached like a bit of a standoff, wouldn't you say, between the fans and the WWE, particularly with some of the the, the hashtags, which were, no, whatever you think of them, I thought they were a little bit OTT <laughs> with yeah. the uh, cancel the WWE network. But it's reaching that boiling point where you should be really absolutely looking forward to. I mean, the amount of optimism we were talking about WrestleMania with and, you know, how they could build it. And they, it just felt like, you know, they burst that balloon <laughs> in the space of, you know, the Royal Rumble match. Yeah, there was so much that they could have done. Um, even Vince tweeted earlier on in the night uh, before the Rumble itself saying that um, this is going to be a humongous year, one of the biggest or if not the biggest year in WWE's history. And it was all starting at the Royal Rumble. And I mean, them putting that out earlier on in the night, I think that many people probably thought that uh, they were going to get their wish of someone like Daniel Bryan winning the Royal Rumble, or at least being in the final four. Um, but it was just insane. I mean, Roman Reigns does indeed reign supreme when it comes to ro the Royal Rumble. But I have to say that I I don't know. Uh, my afterthought now is that it's kind of getting a bit better uh, with the promos on Raw. But I still didn't agree with it at the time. And I never understood the whole booking of the Royal Rumble. It just felt 
so wrong. Even the first participants, number one and number two, it was like that wasn't very exciting. I mean, the biggest pop probably of the night was either um, Bully Ray or Bubba Ray Dudley or um, The Rock at the end. But then the, even The Rock's pop kind of burst when, uh, you know, <laughs> they all realised that they were, the fans basically realised that The Rock had been sent in to do some sort of damage control because they knew that they weren't going to be happy with Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. It would have been better if, um, I think we said in our kind of uh, drunken stupor last night, that it would have been better if The Rock came in and literally um, laid Reigns out. <laughs> but what, what they did, uh, it's, it's that. And it's it's the insulting, I think. And that's what you, you've, you've got, is you had a very pro what wrestling crowd there in Philadelphia. They... You're insulting their intelligence by by doing stuff like that, and <clears throat> they know why the Rock's there. The, the WWE know why the Rock's there. The Rock is there because they're expecting a, a crap reaction to Roman Reigns. I do like the fact that WWE try and book these things as as much in advance as possible, like you know any other wrestling organization would. But um, it, it it just it, it it brought up so many things that are currently wrong with it. Um, that the fact that you're having to bring someone in the rock just to try and control a bad reaction Damage speaks, control, man. yeah, speaks volumes. If you know you're going into the event doing that already, something's got to be clicking in WWE's mindset. Surely that something's not right. I thought that really, if the rock, when he, I actually thought during the actual Raw Rumble that um, you know the rock was actually going to be number thirty coming in, but it, as it got as it ticked on, I started noticing that you know the likes of the Big Show, Dolph Ziggler hadn't come out, and you know that became slim to none. And that really, for me, would have been the only way they could have saved it on the night was have the Rock come out as number thirty and eliminate Roman Reigns. I mean, it was just a complete mess at the end. And let's face facts: uh, the whole Rusev bit was absolutely insane i mean the crowd were chanting for rusev for starters that just shouldn't be happening i mean he's meant to be where your top heel in the company and the fans were so hacked off with roman reigns winning the rumble or or looking like he was going to win it at that point that they cheered for rusev and you know the thing that annoyed me was it was just it was just very strange. Like the bell had rung, Rusev wasn't eliminated. Earlier on in the night we had Curtis Axel not even get in to the Royal Rumble. However, Eric Rowan had to take his spot from him. Why didn't he just get put in the rumble in the first place? Just a multitude of strange decisions and Daniel Bryan's elimination earlier in the night, I mean, ah, that just blew my mind. When I watched it live, uh, my reaction was no. <laughs> that mine, was it. No, mine, mine started with "what the," and you can probably guess the uh, the last word. C crowd killer. That was what it was. But it's. I, I mean, I'll, I'll give Roman Reigns this because he is. He's currently broken. You know, every Royal Rumble record, including you know the 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 the, the last person in it. Because I think at the moment he's got about what seven and a half days. Because Axel Curtis, throw back to one of your videos. Um, <laughs> Curtis Axel's still in it, isn't he? <laughs> well, that's it. I, I mean, it's just it was just so badly booked. I mean, like tying up little loopholes here and there just weren't weren't thought about. Um, I don't I don't get it. I mean, the, the WWE know this is their biggest, or if not, um, you know, it's their second biggest pay per view for excitement. I mean, SummerSlam's in there, but but I would say excitement wise, everybody looks forward to the Royal Rumble. And I will say this, weeds. Um, I just want to point out this as as a as a viewpoint for it because if you look at a year ago when they messed it up with Batista, who was everybody cheering at the time? Roman Reigns. And they were cheering Roman Reigns because the decision was to book Batista to win that rumble. If Roman Reigns had won it last year, they would have wanted him to win the title. It's just ridiculous now because coming, you know, full circle, Roman Reigns has become the Batista. A a, a a character that's been pushed down the WWE universe's throat. And this is why it always goes wrong. Cause let's face it. We don't like this. Um, I'll, you know, I'll just quickly maybe drop in a little reference to TNA fantastic <laughs> promo last night about these sort of issues. Um, kind of felt like it was a cheap shot at the WWE, but, um, yeah, TNA taking note of the issues that are going <coughs> on in WWE at the moment. But this is what WWE used to be so good at, and they always had their finger on the pulse, and 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 that seems to be what they've come a, away from. And I think again, we were talking about the Triple H 
um, promo that he did on SmackDown and and on the on, in his Wednesday interview, mm-hmm. and he was basically he was using the NFL and how they they don't deal with controversy, and I that I mean it didn't take a genius to read that that's not aimed at the that is aimed at the fans. You know we don't like being told what to do. Um, even if it's an unpopular decision, we'll do it. And it, that that is exactly what this is. This is essentially for me the wwe sticking two fingers up at, at their fan base they're, they're, they're basically saying oh at the same time we've got our million subs hmm. yeah, if, if you say so. <laughs> yeah um and and it's basically you're gonna buy the product anyway because i think they're so comfortable that there's nothing else to challenge them out there um that they can they feel like they can do what they want i mean it I'm, I, I don't have a problem with Roman Reigns to no, be honest, no. wi- winning the Rumble. That that's not what this is. Mm. Um, but what we got was a a throwback to the WCW days, where you know you could have. I mean, the the famous ones, the the Ric Flair Hogan first blood match. I don't know if you ever remember that one. Mm. It was in about ninety nine, and it was in a cage, and it basically came down to um, uh, you had to do um first first blood um and unfortunately rick started bleeding i think about five minutes into it but then they they came up with this rule that you could only um you could only win if it was uh you were bleeding on purpose like like you have a choice in the map it was it was that kind of booking it was just so odd um that that you know with everything from the, the like the spots we've said that Kurt, you know Curtis Axel's still in it um they forgot Rusev was in it at the end it was just it was just awful it was it was not a professional thing that we've come to expect from from WWE was it no i just i didn't really understand even even earlier on in the match when Bray Wyatt had his moment and and then it was it kind of for me it was begging for Dean Ambrose to come out after he cut that promo as the next number and then it wasn't Daniel Bryan immediately it was it was someone else and it was like what's the point um i think i don't know if you've listened to JR's podcast this week when he had Mark Madden on there, but I think they hit on so many of these issues and it hit the, I think the key, one of the key ones that stuck with me was that you've got Vince's prototype of what a wrestler should look like a baby face wrestler. Yeah. Or, or yeah, they're muscly. They're big. They're the big guys. They don't move around too much, but you know, it's the awe of seeing someone the size that they are because they basically that I've never seen Royal Rumbles where you've had, Someone like Kane and Big Show, who are really at the tail end of their career, they're, 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 they're neither one thing or the other. They're, they got to the point where fans just, yeah, they're there for the sake of being there. They're the authority, like bigger stooge versions of um, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury. And they were just picking up the small, very over wrestlers, and just literally dumping them on the floor. It was ridiculous. That is, you can't insult fans more than they, they were trying to do there. And I get that they're trying to get the heat for when the, the rock comes in and Roman, but you, you can't do, it was like trying to run before you can walk. But it wasn't even it wasn't even just faces they were dumping out. They were dumping everybody they out. They did Bray Wyatt. Yeah, it was just, it was just a case of who's ever, whoever's in there is going out. And, and it's probably... It's probably one of the worst final fours I think we've ever seen. But I mean, how? What? What? At what point where you're booking this match, where you've got all these limitless possibilities of what you can do, can you get so stuck that that is the final four you come up with, and those are the way you, your your eliminations are done? I mean, just going back to Roman Reigns, I always thought that the the, the Royal Rumble was to make someone absolutely shine. Um, and to be honest with you, other than his, the final two eliminations, which would just look like any old elimination, yeah, I don't remember a thing that he did. No, and the trouble was as well is all of this, um, the reason why there was so much you know, animosity about this was because they brought Daniel Bryan back. Now, why did they bring back Daniel Bryan? Why did they rush him back just to have him be eliminated like 11th in the Royal Rumble? It just, it just made absolutely no sense. I mean, all of this, you know, getting him back in time, I think everybody thought there was a reason to it. And it just feels like it's rushed and it's been a mess. And the all other... it comes, all it comes across is is absolute bullshit that they brought him back around the time where they want this run up, so they could get over their their sub hump, isn't it? It's just yeah. basically they threw a big name at fans, and and the only thing I would say 
is that yeah they've done that and it's their it's their way to do their marketing model if they have done it for that reason and yeah they have pulled in the subs by all accounts if you listen to triple h anyway but um it would also point out that if they're not going to go with that one they never thought he was over in the first place so they bowed to peer pressure and two um he's probably not fully recovered if he, if he is back and being going out as because he like i think you said to me he didn't even go out in a, a kind of like he was clinging on for dear life he literally no. just got dumped out yeah and that was it it was so it was so if you if you blinked you'd missed it and and I also thought, if you're going to do it this way, why didn't he come in as number one? I mean, at least, you know, give him the hype that he's lasted X amount of minutes in the Royal Rumble, tried his best, but obviously the injuries were playing on him and he got dumped out. I mean, that would have been the best scenario, but not not the way it was done. It was like, I, I, I actually was looking away and my brother said to me, Daniel Bryan's gone out. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> Double check. No way. Yes way. Uh Oh, unbelievable and and do you know what I mean I know we're, we're picking out all the negatives but it needs to be talked about and everybody's talked about it but this is coming off of the back of probably one of the best world title matches that we've seen in a long time uh, a, a match of the year contender that's for sure between Brock Lesnar Seth Rollins and John Cena so you're going from something that's quite epic and the crowd are really into uh, into the pay-per-view at this point and then just smashing it with this massive downer that just went down in the Royal Rumble match two I years mean- in a row two years I mean, what well, I mean, what would you do now from where they are with Roman Reigns? Because I mean, there there are some guys who, when they get stuff like that, like I'm thinking Cena, you know, he will always just grin and bear it. It's his job. He, he and he, he you know, grin all right, won't he? But you, you saw Roman Reigns' face. He, 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 yeah, he did not respond well to 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 being booed. I, either I don't think it's that he didn't get it. I think a lot of it's probably to do with this isn't me, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm being. This is, this is my biggest push. This is my opportunity. I'm having everyone knows the famously scripted promo shoved down my throat. Mm. I don't, I, I, I don't want to do this, and I'm taking the flack basically because you know, like you said, I was, I was the guy they wanted a year ago, um, and now I'm, you know, now I'm being booed out the building. So if you're Roman Reigns. What what would you do with your character at this point? I'd be banging on the door of Vince and Triple H and saying, you've got to turn me heel now. You have to do something with me. So, um, you know, OK, the, the crowd's going to give me heat. But it's almost it's almost flashbacks of his uh, of his cousin, isn't it? I mean, it's the rock all over again, trying to shove Rocky Maivia down people's throats. As long as Roman Reigns doesn't start grinning like he used to and had that. Do you remember the hair? The hair was awesome. And the sideburns. <laughs> Everything about The Rock was fantastic. And, and he had and like that Rocky blue Maivia, tutu though. on. Yeah. Yeah, it was but weird. It's, right. You've got, you've got, I, that's what I would do. One of the options is you go down the, the, the corporate champion, you know, even to the point where you couldn't even use a storyline where you can say, Seth, you had your opportunity. You didn't get it done. I'd like I'd like that to happen, to be honest. I, I don't think Roman Reigns will have too many issues, um, you know, sticking it to the fans in terms of heel heat he doesn't have to as a heel it's a little bit more easier for somebody they don't have to you don't have to just appease the fans you can you can just act how you want he could really act laid back like he doesn't yep. care it would work fine and lesnar lesnar doesn't have to be a face he's just going to be a face that's the way it works with brock lesnar everybody likes him because he's legitimately you know he's, he's authentic he's lesnar yes yeah, he's authentic he's not trying to be anything that he's not um, he knows he's not good at promos. That's why Paul Heyman's there, you know. It, and he 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 is over, you know, just like you say, just because he is the beast. exactly what he's advertised that. And I mean, if I was the WWE, you've surely surely got to pay him because um, I can't see him, you know, with the injury record that he's had um, and, and some of the health problems, going back into a, a competitive. MMA kind of world so I don't even know if it would be UFC because a lot of people have been talking about Bellator as well um it's surely got to be better for the WWE to just get him involved more pay him more because they're not short of money I mean you know the amount of cuts they (laughs) they have made and now that the subs have reached that one million mark the money is there yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd do everything possible to retain Lesnar at this point. I know people say, well, if he's champion, this part-time thing. Well, he doesn't have to be part-time. WWE have to make the offer to make sure he does more shows. So It's um, not like he exerts himself when he turns up. 
No, he doesn't. He had like three uh, three lines this week on uh, on Raw, and he still managed to botch it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Matter. I mean, it was like the battle of the promos. Who could get theirs right between Roman Reigns and uh, Brock Lesnar? That's more important than the WrestleMania match. Who can cut a decent promo between these two? But you love Lesnar. I mean, that's the way I came away from it. It was like I know Lesnar botched the promo, but of I course still, I do, baby. I, yeah, yeah, I still just I still just love the way Lesnar goes. I think one of the things is going into this WrestleMania. Um, how does Roman Reigns as well beat Brock Lesnar? Because let's be honest, he doesn't really have a very large arsenal. I even tweeted this to Taz because Taz was talking about this on his podcast. And I tweeted Taz, what does Roman Reigns need to do to beat Brock Lesnar? Does he need to hit him with 16 Superman punches? And Taz replied with no, 17. So, I mean, but that's that's the logic at the moment. Everybody said it from Austin to Taz that they all like Roman Reigns and I like Roman Reigns, but he wasn't ready because he's not He's not the finished product yet. He hasn't got that arsenal. He hasn't got that skill on the mic. um, And he hasn't got that reputation. Yes, he he eliminated a lot of people in the Royal Rumble um, last year. But that that reputation of, of, you know, being a destroyer, I, I don't buy it when it comes to uh, to Roman Reigns still. It's not it's not there yet. He needs to go longer <clears throat> to have that thought process. He's still still, you know, pretty pretty green. And I know he hates that that phrase, but it's the right phrase. No, yeah, it's exactly the right phrase. And and it's like you're saying, going I am sure we'll come on to the championship match um when we, when we're when we're when we're through through uh critiquing the rumble. Um but I mean Lesnar they made they did make look superhuman. So it's exactly what unbelievable what, what you say um is that how how does Reigns do this? Because I mean <laughs> at the can't. moment he's struggling with the big show you you know lesnar's a monster now this is this is wwe's own doing i mean i mean it's fantastic what they've done with lesnar to make him into the beast but then when you are that strong when you when you've got up from you know three in a row attitude adjustments and he'd already been hit with another one in the evening as well when you're you know defeating the undertaker like he's a jobber when you you know when you're just going through the competition like Brock Lesnar is doing that there, there it comes a point where you think you have just pushed him to a point where he is unstoppable and the only sort of guy that i would think that could be a brock lesnar is a guy like the rock because that's the sort of guy that could come back and do it and i know they said well he didn't do it in 2002 but it would work whereas reigns hasn't got that experience to to come in and and you think well he can do it i just now it's become that thing about respect doesn't it it's become that's what the storyline is now that you will respect me as brock lesnar doesn't respect me at the moment that's what this wrestlemania is all going to be about but that's, respect that, but that's that's perfect and that is the perfect thing to build on because at the moment that's exactly what the fans and this is why lesnar is going to be you know probably the baby face in this is because the fans don't respect reigns at the moment because he hasn't earned it but are you going uh, to respect him if he wins at the at WrestleMania? Uh, how, is that going to change your? No, I'm going to expect Seth Rollins, the only guy that I thought really came out other than Lesnar with complete credibility from the event, because he showed me that 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 he is he absolutely ready. Because I had questions about him before, you know, the fight. But he that that's his main event as you get with Seth Rollins from that that event. You they're, they're, he's he's done. He's finished. You don't really need to build anything else on him. He just needs the title now. Um, but yeah, I mean, picking up on your 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 point um, about Lesnar is um, is that surely they've got to keep him after what he just did at the Rumble because otherwise you're completely undermining your product. Because you basically said a curb stomp means nothing. Um, <laughs> an attitude ad- ad- adjustment means even less. <laughs> um, you know, and and and, it, and it's one F five and you're done. You know, he, they have made him like you say a complete beast. But to the point that if he did go off to the UFC, you'd consider well, you, UFC would want to be what I'm watching because that's where it's really competitive. Because all Lesnar's done for the last eighteen months, two years, is destroy people. So they're going to hurt themselves if they don't keep him. I think if you do a comparison to what we've been seeing in TNA recently with Bobby Lashley, that's almost it was similar. But but TNA have been clever about what they've done with Lashley because they've they have allowed him at points to come unstuck. 
which you means need to be vulnerable. Yeah, which means there is that vulnerability about Lashley. Whereas, whereas I, yeah, people will be like, well, yeah, it's Brock Lesnar we're talking about here. It's, we're talking about the Beast. We're not talking about Lashley. But, but that's not the point. The point is, if you build someone up to a degree where they become unstoppable, then you you really need another superpower to take him out. And the WWE just do not have that. They, they do not have that. Is all no. No, but on paper, but that yeah, is all it is, is Cena. Yes. There is no one else. And if Cena can't get the job done with attitude adjustments and, you know, you know, as we say, we call him Super Cena. If Cena cannot stop the beast, then nobody can. And and that that is, as you know, that's me saying that. And I was going to say a bit tongue in cheek. Where do you stand on uh, Lesnar's no selling Cena's attitude adjustments? Yeah, I know, all right. Yeah. No selling's very important to you, Delzinski. Yeah, but I, I, do you know what? <laughs> I didn't mind it because I thought it was. I thought it looked pretty good. He wasn't. Oh, it, you it, Cena hater! No, it felt, <laughs> it felt good. It felt like it. It was. It felt like to me that this is this. But this is it. I it, it, to me, it wasn't unexpected that he would do that because that is the way he rolls at the moment. He just. He just, you know, eat, sleep, no cells, repeats because because <laughs> be, because he can because he's Brock Lesnar. It's like Paul Heyman said on his promo. I mean, he said he doesn't say Brock Lesnar. He says Brock Lesnar, and he says that because he knows what it's all about when it comes to Brock Lesnar. It's just that is it. He has been made into a monster. Okay, so then. Based on that, then, we know what we're getting at the moment, which is Reigns versus Lesnar. How do you book it? I'd book it at... I, I, I have to book it at Reigns wins because of the situation with Lesnar. Um, but then I would have Seth Rollins cash in on the night and defeat Roman Reigns, and he leaves as champion, starting a feud between Rollins and Reigns for the title. But I would say that what's likely to happen if that scenario does arise, that it will actually be Roman Reigns who will defeat Seth Rollins, so he will destroy the cash-in and he will walk out because it's all about making Roman Reigns look strong and that would be the perfect way to do it, is to have him beat Lesnar and then beat Rollins on the same night and walk out as champion because that's the way I think WWE want Roman Reigns to look. You've just, yeah, it's, I, I mean, I, I, I think that is likely what they, they might do. And it won't, uh, be, it won't be good because the fans will hate it. But you've got to find, it's exactly that, you've got to find a way to do it in a credible manner. One, one, one thing I would say with the WWE now, and I suppose last question surrounding the Rumble before, I would imagine we're going to move on to the championship match because as I said, I don't think there was an awful lot more to talk about on this pay-per-view. Um, WWE pride themselves absolutely have been staunch for years that anything can happen in the WWE. Do you believe that? Not anymore. It's it's just not there anymore. There is no surprise. Well, there's no surprise when it comes to big events. Like it's pretty predictable a lot of the time. Look, well, that, like like you say, Daniel Bryan was a shock elimination, but the whole the whole thought process that Roman Reigns was going to win the Royal Rumble was was not was not shocking, was not exciting because we it was already, you know, a blueprint that was going to happen. It, it was it was coming to that that conclusion that Roman Reigns was going to win the Royal Rumble. So it it, it pay-per-view after pay-per-view, it's it's very predictable. I mean, even the underdog story of Daniel Bryan last year when he did get in the main event, there was no there was no way you were looking at anyone else winning. No. It, it, it. I mean, and 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 that's it. it you, you, you want it scripted no up to a, up to a point. I mean, I still remember the night and when when Jericho, um, unified the titles. Never saw it coming. But that's it. It's, it's because the trouble is, there's they're focused too much in making certain people look better, and and because it's well publicised now that that's their focus. Then um, you know, these other these other guys slip by the wayside, and that's. That's what happens, and you don't have you don't have anyone that's on like a level a level playing field at the moment. If it was, this is why I thought the best main event going would have been Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins because that is a main event where I wouldn't be able to tell you who I think is going to win it. Well, at the moment, I suppose you've got you, you've got Ziggler and 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 Bryan trying to book their own one, but no, exactly, you would have got absolutely 
awesome wrestling. You'd have got someone coming back if he is 100%. I still don't think he is, Brian. And I think that's why they, they've done what they did. They just didn't want the reaction they got last year. But it's like you say, you put those two in a match and you do you get a bit of the NXT kind of feel, don't you? That Literally, it's you get, you're going to get a proper wrestling wrestling story like we said throw the authority into that as well and you've got your you, you got yourself <laughs> a, a legitimate main event um so i suppose the rumble then um we I, I i know from my point of view i walked away um in a bit of a mood saying it was bullshit <laughs> at the end um i did calm down slightly afterwards um but i didn't like it i suppose is 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 what i came away with and it was it was frustrating for me to think they missed so many opportunities. I don't know if you fall down. It sounds like you fall down exactly the same sort of sword that I have on. Yeah, it, the the element of surprise had gone when Daniel Bryan was eliminated, unfortunately. I think I think that's what, you know, we just talked about it, but that's the point. If it was the final four and you had guys like Ziggler, um, Ambrose. Ambrose and Bryan and Reigns, uh, you would not be able to call it. And even if it got to the final two and it was Bryan and Reigns, you would still not be able to call it. And yes, okay, at that point, if let's say Roman Reigns did indeed win it, at least you wouldn't have been able to go, well, this is predictable, because at that point you wouldn't have known. And that was the issue that we knew probably from when Daniel Bryan got eliminated, there was only one winner. But would you say recently, I suppose since Rey Mysterio won the Rumble back in um, 2006, I think it was, mm. that the Rumbles on the whole have been quite predictable. It's either been, oh, we're giving this guy a go this year, um, it's his turn to go in main event, or it's their chosen guy. It's, it's, it's it, The Rumble used to be great because it was so unpredictable. Anything could happen, and you, know, you knew you were going to be going in a different direction, as it were, for the next three months up into Mania. Um, but I, I just feel, on the whole, the Rumble's just become a a very mundane boring pay-per-view that's because though they don't they don't market it right in terms of when they bring people back like then they brought batista back it was it batista batista should never have been advertised or told about that this is all again to do going back to you know getting the subscribers up on the wwe network all this sort of stuff that's irrelevant when it comes to wrestling the shock factor would have been if no one knew batista was coming back at the royal rumble and he won it then and everyone would have been like whoa Batista won the Royal Rumble. I didn't even know he was going to be in it. Then it adds a different element to it. The issue at the moment is that everything is advertised. Daniel Bryan didn't come back at the Royal Rumble. That was something that made me very angry. Why did he get brought back a couple of weeks before on SmackDown? Well, and lose straight away. And the reason why he straight. did, though, was because they wanted to sell SmackDown again. It's just, it was moving to Thursdays, I think. You know, it's, it's, it's all the time. It's about certain promotional things that the WWE are doing. And yes, okay, that's good. It's probably good for their business. But ultimately, is it good for their business when you're just actually, you know, sticking it to the fans 24-7? And that's what it feels like, that is that we can do anything and, and we will do anything and you will still buy it because we're, we're <laughs> because you're mugs and that's, and that's what you do. And that's what it feels like more often than but not. It, but it is like that because let's face facts. The You're guy, subscribed. I'm subscribed. <laughs> yeah. And the people that got rid of the WWE Network, you wait, they will be back come WrestleMania. So it's, it's you know, <laughs> they do hold us, um, you know, uh, to ransom. Esteem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's, let's, let's move so, on to a positive. Let's yeah. Move I was going to say we've been very, very miserable. Well, not miserable, but we've critiqued it quite a lot. But I think it's been critiqued by, you know, every man and his dog in, in oh. the last week. So something we did really like, obviously the Divas tag team match. No, we didn't like that. That was bizarre. <laughs> that was a weird one as well for that matter. Let's not even touch on that. I mean, it was just crazy. It was Paige not even up for getting involved in that match. No, but uh, I, I was going to say probably, probably for another day, but I reckon we could do a whole wee talk just on the Divas and, and the state of that. I uh, have to invite so. L on to do that. Cause you can bring some positives to it. Maybe. Well, someone's going to have to do because it's just a frigging mess, really. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the championship match, um, like you said, it was an early candidate for match of the year. I did have some issues with it, but overall, I, 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 I loved it. It had me on the edge of my seat. I was really, really pulling for Seth the whole way through, and I literally went through every, every false finish, two count with him. Um, but on the whole, 
uh, it was great. And and <laughs> the, I, I just I turned around to my um, daughter who was watching it with me, and I was like, "Where's Lesnar? Where's Lesnar?" And 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 I think like you said, you did something similar. He just shot out of nowhere, didn't he? I loved it. Yeah, it was great. And the best bit about it was was that sort of Lesnar moment because I kind of was sitting there thinking, is this legitimate? Is he actually injured? And uh, we were saying it last night, you know, when WWE keep ca- pan into the incident, you know, then you start thinking, nah, this is a bit of a work. It's definitely Did he hurt work. his rib by any chance? Yeah, and then they started saying what had happened and you, you began to think, yeah, this is a work. But But the whole thing was it was going so long that I was thinking, well, maybe something is wrong because he hasn't got in yet. And, you know... Uh, Don't blink. <laughs> Rollins is hitting with the kitchen sink and uh, it looks like it's coming to the end. And then, bang, he was in there uh, like a rocket, German suplex in, F5 in, and just winning the championship or retaining the championship. It was it was booked very well as a match. I liked the structure of the match. Uh, I, thought, I thought Rollins definitely uh, stole the show, but I think... Lesnar wise again just it's just it I like watching the way I, I was torn between who I wanted to win I wanted Rollins on the basis that I think it's good for for WWE moving forward but I also wanted Lesnar because I just I I'm just a huge Lesnar fan I just think as I say it's 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 the total package not Lex Luger with 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 Brock Lesnar <laughs> that <certainly> not <laughs> that it's just you know it's him as a person this is it there's no there's no frills there's no gimmick it's just Brock Lesnar, the person, and he just don't take no shit from anybody. It literally, I think I said this to you. And credit to Cena, credit to Cena, because he did put on a good match. He did, he did, and uh, um, and I'll be fair to him. Obviously, I I'm, I do like Cena, but he he did keep the spotlight off himself. That in, that moment that where he uh, whipped. Uh, Lesnar into the the steps I think it was he was trying to make sure that he didn't get paid I liked that it was like that aggressive side of, oh he took him through the barrier as well but he still got up and it was all that that whole little section of that match was good where it was all about that know, was Cena, awesome that bit Cena ensuring that that Lesnar stayed out of the match and obviously Rollins completely took him out of the game with that uh, elbow drop through the table which was phenomenal what um what Lesnar feels like to me though, you remember when you used to play computer games and you'd the have boss. like the boss level? Yeah. <laughs> He's got like, you know, he is literally like facing the Undertaker in the streak in two K fourteen. Um he he is literally when you think you've got him beat, he's gonna throw something else at you. I mean, the I I loved the bit when he went crashing through the barrier with Cena. My other favourite bit, um, other than poor old Seth doing his four fifty and then getting completely um tonked on his head was when um you could just see it, it was like catapult finish. That's all that went through my mind. Um, as, as Seth um jumped into the ring, Lesnar caught him, stumbled, and then just smashed him. Yeah, I, 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 I thought it was really good, you know? and for me, um, it did everything that I wanted it to do for Seth, which I kind of questioned in some of the other pay per views of what they were trying to actually get out of Seth um, when he went against uh, like Ambrose and, and things like that. It was about elevating him and having him lose at the same time, and I thought for all the things they got wrong in the Rumble, they got everything spot on with Seth, other than giving him the championship, which I really wanted him to have. Yeah, the, the, that's why, like I say, the Rumble became such a such a disappointment because this match was so good. It was it was a great match from uh, uh, I thought it was booked well from beginning to end, and um, you you just you couldn't in a way that match should have been predictable. You should have thought that Lesnar was going to win it, but you you just wasn't sure. You you thought possibly for a moment I even thought Cena could have won that match, and that that's what was like. Well, first Cena, now Rollins, and then and obviously ultimately Lesnar got himself back in the game, but. That was that was that's where the WWE have got it right in terms of um, leaving a bit to uh, to surprise us. Um, no, it was it, it was exactly that. I think when it comes to Cena, we know when he's he's going to be winning because it will just be marketed as they will 16. be shoving they will be shoving sixteen, not just because of the German suplexes, but obviously because of his championship reigns potentially down down our throat. So I think that's pretty much where we'll, we'll, we'll know when that's going to happen because it will happen. I think it it probably will surpass whether you like it or not. (laughs) Um, Um, Ric Flair's record, unless, unless he wants to respect it himself. Um, But no, it was, and and I still, that, that finish just with Lesnar coming out of nowhere and and started dropping people again. um, 
And he got so close, Seth, didn't he? With that, he I really like the finish with the case where he's literally throwing the last bits of everything that he's got at him. And he got so close and you could just see it in his face. It's like curb stomp on the case away from winning the belt. And that's what that was what was brilliant. Because I think everyone thought that if he hits that curb stomp on the case, this is done. We have a new champion. Yeah. And, and, and that was that's what I was thinking at the time. I was thought this is over. And no, it wasn't. No, it was Boom, boom. <laughs> um, it, it was a great match. I've watched it a couple of times already because it was that good. And that's that's the that's the credit that you can say to it. You could go and watch that match and just thoroughly enjoy it from beginning to end. Even Cena taking out uh, J&J Security was pretty entertaining. He nearly... Uh, <laughs> he nearly <laughs> broke him in half. Yeah. He did. He did. It was. It was like. It was like. Um. It literally was like. Uh, oh my god! Moments and finishes and signatures. It was like a. It was like a, a, a mishmash of two K fifteen. Um. In real life, that's what that match comes together as. And even the table spot, I really liked because I legitimately thought when I watched it the first time, I was like, "There's no way." Because I thought Seth Rollins had broken his ribs the first time I watched it. Because I thought it landed on the edge of the table, and it turned out he actually clocked Lesnar about as hard as you can clock someone. Um, but no, it, it was exactly. It was like a two K fourteen, two K fifteen match where it just had all these amazing spots in, and they all worked so well on on the whole. Um, I did have one slight complaint about the match you know me the professor has always got to uh have an have an opinion or, or critique in some way um i know you didn't mind this too much but i did have a problem with the amount of finishes that were being hit in this match and how with guys like rollins and, and cena that the finishes meant um nothing uh, a lot of the time it was literally um just Lesnar's. And I, the only problem I have with that is because you, you, if Lesnar is going, um, you're making the product look weak. Um, and that the finishes to, at some point throughout the match meant nothing to me because I was like, oh, well, they've hit, he's only hit one. So um, they're obviously going to kick out. So it did take out the element of surprise in some of the places for me that, that things were going to happen because they, there were so many. I think I would have to count them, but I would imagine there was probably about 12, 13. Sort yeah, of. but you've got to be used to this by now. This is WWE we're talking about. Hey, if, yeah. <laughs> if you do a comparison to like things that go on in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and stuff like that, you don't ever see them use their finishes. It's it's the final final ending of a match is when the finisher comes I together. Think, and it's just the WWE thing that ev- both one both people have to get their finisher in. I don't like that. It should be you hit a finisher at times just because you know the other guy got lucky or whatever it is. It should be finisher and done on the whole for me. But it's literally every WWE match. You'll see Ziggler hit his, you'll see Reigns hit his. You know, everyone has to get their stuff in. Well, the attitude adjustment is probably the weakest finisher in the history it's just, of wrestling. It's a fireman now. carry. It's fire. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. It's it, 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 you just got to watch comparisons really in different in different areas. Like you say, New Japan from for me does it does it kind of right when it comes down to uh, to the way that they book matches and they actually have the ending of the match. Again. It actually has meaning to it a little bit more. Again, w, yeah, exactly. And and but that 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 goes into the the um, the kind of anything can happen because you know anything can't happen until both guys have hit their finishes so i i don't like it i don't like the wwe product for that and i think it started around was it 17 mm-hmm. um when austin and rock both hit their finishes a couple of times and then it was the novelty that you know oh it was anything could happen because they're kicking out finishes but now it's just the norm and i yeah it doesn't work for me um, overall, like I say, that was that was that was the best match of the night. That was probably the uh, that was probably what got everybody hyped for the main event, which ultimately didn't go to plan. But you know, it, it, we got to move on from it. And uh, I, I do think that Raw has kind of started picking up a bit with the, the promos between uh, uh, Lesnar and Reigns and um, Hay- Heyman's in there as well. I do think it's going to get better, but I'm I'm just intrigued to see how it plays out in terms of. Reigns being a face when he really can't be. And it was interesting again that even though Brian got treated like he did, he's suddenly the centre of attention again outside of Reigns on SmackDown. He's in a casket match for, for God rubbish. knows. For God knows what I'm not, reason. Not even acknowledging <clears throat> that that match happened on the basis that but it's why just is insulting. it a casket match? Why is it what what's 
What meaning does it have? We've got Corporate Kane, who's not a demon anymore, has nothing to do with those sort of matches. Uh, I could only assume it was stupid. Daniel Bryan's career that was on the line for being but buried. It, but, <laughs> it, but it's just terrible. It's just, it's, it just has no meaning to it. It's a pointless match. And but it's, it's insulting because, then again, you, you're saying Bryan is relevant and you've just told me on pay-per-view that he's not. Which yeah. one is it? Well, they've got to sell uh, SmackDown, haven't they? So they've got to stick Brian on it. So You mean Monday Night Raw? Oh, he is. He is, he is a chuckle at times, Hunter, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know. Uh, I mean, moving on to something even more positive, let's talk about what we went to last night because last night was just awesome, in my opinion. I mean, we, we talked about it at the start of the show. Um, just to let you guys know that... Um, Obviously, we went to TNA Impact Wrestling at Wembley Arena last night, and uh, I took lots of pictures, lots of videos. Um, so, and so, some, and some, you didn't even take videos. Yeah, sometimes I was just not even pressing the record button, and just then, looking at your camera, just, just looking at it around the arena. Yeah, just I just look at these things. Whilst then, I wet myself. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I thought I'd recorded an epic spot that happened, then found out I didn't actually because I was on the photo page instead of the video. So. Nice one. Um, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. but if you want like 50 photos of the same thing, you know, Delzinski's your man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, check out my Instagram uh, at Delzinski. I'll have loads of pictures going up. Um, I won't be giving like spoilers away of winners and losers and stuff because um, what we saw last night is going to be aired, I think, around about end of Feb, March, early March. I think March. it's the middle of March. We're actually ah. it's March the 20th. So, like uh, I, I know because a lot of people do complain about how far they book in advance it's 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 that's bullshit as far as i'm concerned you have to book that far in advance just because of the tv it doesn't matter if it's live wwe approving that it, it doesn't need to be live to be good yeah so so uh we won't won't give away any sort of winners or losers but we'll have a few pictures on there of what was going down um and yeah it was it was a great event i mean um it was like a pay-per-view wouldn't you say it it was. It felt like a pay per view, and I mean the crowd. The, but the biggest thing for me is I've been to Wembley a couple of times. Been to WWE Live, um, and you know it's a bit mm. like that Philly crowd that were in uh, the Royal Rumble. Uh, when a crowd is electric, when a crowd is up for the event, um, it just makes such a difference. And this was what it does for TNA because uh, we've all we've all talked about it. We all know their issues in the United States, where they've been doing a bit better in New York, but. Um, they just they don't have that huge following which they're trying to get back and uh, over here the crowd just makes such a difference a li- uh, a crowd that is up for the event and wants to see the action and let's be honest TNA gave us the action that we wanted yeah I mean it was a very knowledgeable crowd I suppose they intricately knew the storylines um, which was good um, and they I mean the, but the one thing I would say about impact that that we went to was the variety again we're not going to go into specifics but if you wanted to see a little bit of everything that is exactly what we got wasn't it yeah you got uh, there's a lot of um, questions around the way tna overdo some of their you know match stipulations but i think that the reason why they do that now on this uh you know destination america is is let's face facts it's they are they are working hard at having a wrestling show and this is it's all about putting on a, a great spectacle in terms of wrestling that's what they're working hard at, at the moment and it's a complete different look compared to the wwe because the wwe is not 100 percent focused on wrestling and and that's the bit that where people haven't been watching this product for quite some time tna were trying to do this before they hit the reboot button and they were getting there but this reset button and working with destination america seems to me that they've finally got their shit together and it's all coming along perfectly. The re- the rebrand of the arena looked great as well. I have to say, seeing the six-sided ring, the entranceway, it feels like finally they've got their branding right. It's all under one banner now. They took, I suppose, the, the complaint we've had with WWE is the lack of attention to detail um, and what's something that TNA's historically been poor at. Mm. Um, that, like you say, with the arena, all the little things they they got right. There were a couple of filler matches um, last night, which didn't really do anything, and they were a bit bizarre. Um, but on, on on the whole, it was it was a proper wrestling show with angles that had been developed and made sense. Um, there wasn't just a, you know majority of the matches had meaning. Yeah. 
and and that and that's and that's what's good. And I, I suppose the best thing is, yeah, TNA might not be on Spike TV in America anymore, and going out to the largest audience they have, but they actually look like they've got a provider now in Destination America, who legitimately care about what they are trying to do and accomplish, and doing it together with with impact. Um, for for me, it I I on the I watch both. Um, WWE and TNA I don't really get around to Ring of Honor or Lucha Underground um, too much um, but for, for for me you you need you need these wrestling companies because if you if you let WWE keep continuing down this track of you know forcing stuff that we don't necessarily want to see and that and that is it we, we are we are getting things that we we it doesn't matter what you know keeping your your fan base happy because they they take us for granted a lot of the time you need competition and 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 that we always go back we always talk about the attitude era but i don't think it's the attitude era that we actually pine for as fans i think it's the competition of having a choice you know having the wrestlers have to make a choice that forces these these companies into some difficult decisions where they can't be boring and book the same stuff all the time and and that's why i i i thought it was brilliant i mean again we talked about it last night we liked tna um the year before but it was very tna wouldn't you say it was a bit all over the place Mm -hmm. they did have to reshoot some some segments um and like you say they really got their stuff together this year and i'm not saying they're going to challenge the wwe or anything like that but for me at the moment i'd much rather watch something booked consistently that that has that and that has a progressive story angle and arc rather than just watching a a, a one match thing with the wwe so no i i I thought it was good yeah i mean they're they're, they're almost as such utilizing the whole roster as well which is which is great i mean they even had some add-ons last night i mean uh, I'll give you kind of like an overview of who we saw last night. So we saw guys like Lashley, we saw Ethan Carter, we saw Kurt Angle, we saw Rockstar Spud, um, we saw we saw guys like um, uh, a Grado. Obviously, we knew that it, <clears throat> we knew that he was going to be around anyway um, with the UK tour. Um, but it was just it was just good that we saw a lot of stars um, and and everyone was used uh, for a purpose. Like we've got this new uh, the new faction with the Beatdown Clan and. And, and that's really working quite well. I like the way that they've been packaged and branded now. Feels and it's like, worth. It's just worth just tuning in just to see MVP, isn't it? Oh, MVP's just just <laughs> class. If you, you, I mean, you probably. I did tweet a picture out last night. Um, that will probably go on my uh, on my Instagram. So check out that picture of what MVP was actually sporting. Um, for his ring attire for the night. Minor spoiler. Very minor spoiler. Then. Yeah, but it's it's a good one and. Uh, it's a fun one, um, but it was just in in general they they are working hard to to use everybody and for the right reasons. It's not it's not oh we just got to stick him in there we got to use him here. We got we got storylines that are all coming together now. And even this was always something an issue with TNA was you know all these factions that they build and these factions don't really do anything and then they dismember aces and eights and stuff like that. Um, whereas the beatdown clan kind of has a bit of sense to it and they all kind of work together. They feel like a good cohesive unit. Their music all matches the way that they work and they're not massive. It's not like the aces and eights where they can go and recruit tens of hundreds of people. This is just a small gang that have got an issue um, with a few guys and and it, I, I thought it worked nicely and I was I just thought it was an awesome event. There were some shock factors in there as well, things that made me just go, whoa, mm-hmm. and like we've said throughout this We Talk, that is sometimes what you don't get with the WWE and TNA are giving it to you. So you guys out there who are not watching TNA and you're still bashing this product and you haven't even watched it in the recent weeks, do us a favour, go and watch it, um, particularly watch the, the shows that have come over to the UK and uh, maybe you'll get a, a different a different viewpoint of TNA what, moving forward. And that and that it, definitely that. And what and what they do if you like wrestling and you don't just like yeah. entertainment because that's what you get with WWE a lot. This is something it is different. Uh, there are wrestling orientated angles and scenarios in there. And and yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna sit here and say you know they got everything spot on because they didn't. You know, there there were things that didn't ultimately work, but over overall, it left me thinking that is the best wrestling show I've been to in a long, long, long time. 
yeah, there's, there's always this talk, isn't there, about uh, sports entertainment and pro wrestling. And it's definitely becoming clear that TNA have decided to, to focus fully. It's not like the Hogan era, where they almost did become um, a carbon copy of the WWE with sports entertainment. They have focused on a route which is wrestling-based, and they, they're going to keep going down that by the looks of it. And I'm very happy that they're doing that. I could see that coming a little while ago, and now it's gone full force with Destination America. Good to see, and I'm glad that they finally did leave Spike, because I think it's done away with all the uh, cross-promotions that they didn't need. Um, they just got to keep working at this. They don't just don't go over the top. No mention of Bellator, you know. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Lashley can go and 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 work Bellator. He can do that, but there's no need unless TNA fancy just saying he's in it. There, there, there's nothing else needed. There's no need to promote their events. There's no need to bring. Please, I've still heard <laughs> that there's rumours that people like Tito Ortiz and uh, Rampage Jackson may still come back at some point. No, we don't want them back. Now have AJ Styles back. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean TNA also seem to be in the market for for good good guys at the moment. I mean, yeah, you, people will go oh X W W E, but 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 no, not X W W E. They're picking up the guys that are right to be picked up, like guys that are good, credible wrestlers that WWE dropped the ball with. Um, and don't go and say Brodus Clay, but I'm just saying that there's certain guys that TNA are looking at and they're interested in that can put on a good match and WWE just gave them a crap gimmick when they were in there. And, you know, this is this is where TNA are trying to capitalise on these things. And everybody will complain. They will, Ant. They will complain, Weeds, that... that it's it's you know oh it's WWE rejects but let's face facts that's the only place now so if someone comes known they're going to be known for being in the WWE so if he leaves there's TNA there's Lucha Underground there's New Japan where do these guys go and the, I mean don't on the other hand of looking that that the WWE, WWE rejects it just meant on the other hand that WWE had no idea how to use them that's Correct. not a good that's not a good thing <laughs> yeah you know because they i mean there's been enough wrestlers leave there in in the last you know two three years thinking um drew mcintyre now on obviously on the independent scenes drew drew galloway del rio uh, del rio the, you know i could i if, you know given enough time and not just off the top of my head, i could think of a number of guys who you go know, well you, they missed the ball because that that is a wrestler, and you see them turn up, and we we watched Del Rio recently um, on a, on a, an English show, and he he was great, and you just think, well, <laughs> what why why would you not want that on your product? But then it it, it kind of, and again, I'm not going to sit here and bash WWE either because they're trying to do their thing and mix it in. But if you are a wrestling fan, I suppose that it's you you you'd have to consider impact because it's it's the closest thing you get to a wrestling show now um, yeah at the at the two i mean at, at those two products which are probably the most known in america you've got like lucha underground coming up and you've got new japan but but yeah that that but equally there there are things to fix with with it still we're not clear how they're going to do pay-per-views um yeah. you're not going we're not sure um of of you know the structure of their programming completely I still and i think they're they're being quite they're being cautious and they, again that's that's not a bad thing that they, they are taking their time to do things properly and making sure something sticks so that's where they could use being a bit more like the wwe where I'm not saying to the point where you, you, you book roman reigns to the point that you've you've decided he was winning it 18 months ago but you have a bit more of a structure and a plan and, and things aren't just you know we're not going to see the bdc just for you know about three or four weeks and it has no relevance and then they disappear you know give them you know a legitimate time to actually see if they see if the gimmick works and, and that's and that's what they appear to be doing at the moment with impact so no um if, if you do get a chance i'd go and watch it yeah and all i'd say as well is that last night they did utilize all the belts i think which is always good but focus was on the titles so yeah that's and, great uh, and again <laughs> why do we watch if we're not interested in that so guys, yeah, check out my Instagram. I will have pictures there for you. Uh, so you can go check that out at Delzinski. Obviously as well, um, if you want to follow me and Weeds um, when we do go on our wrestling travels, then be sure to follow um, at Weeds underscore world and me uh, at Delzinski on Twitter as well. Because yeah, you'll get to see when we go out and what we get up to as well. And yeah, Normally always, beer involved. Yeah, we're always talking about something on there. Um, yeah, it's like Eric Bischoff says, uh, controversy causes cash. Great. 
That's fucking. And we do, we do. (laughs) If you ever see us, we do argue quite a lot as well. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, guys, that's that's kind of brings us to the end. Um, It's been a really jam packed week in terms of wrestling, and um, yeah, it's been a very, very entertaining, again, and informative we talk. So, Weeds, got anything left to say? Only that I am waiting with bated breath that the WWE will surprise me on Monday night with Triple H's announcement surrounding the Royal Rumble controversy, but I'm not holding my breath. I will... uh, yeah, obviously, I'm looking forward to the uh, the podcast as well with um, Austin and Triple H. Hopefully, yes. Austin will ask him some uh, legitimately tough questions and and see see if he see how much of Vince's boy he is. Yes, I hope Austin asks the questions that the fans want, and I'm going to make you a, a bet here that the the announcement will be that it's either going to be Kane or Big Show versus Roman Reigns for his title shot at WrestleMania. And that is what he's going to book. It's not going to be anything special. It's going to be something like that. I agree. They're not restarting the Rumble, put it that way. (laughs) No. All right, guys. uh, It's calling it a day once again. And don't forget, we're back next week on Saturday, 2 p.m. That is the weekly time slot for We Talk. (laughs) I don't know what the hell that was, but we're getting out of it. (laughs) Laters. Yeah, until next time, guys. Have a good week.